My wig got stuck to his G-string. Politics, it's not one thing, it's life. Politics is life. For me, I think Paris is the fashion center of Europe because the first uh, event, uh, fashion event, happened in Paris because worse, Historically, was coming since 1891 to show his own work, and after Paris uh, became to, to be the center of uh, haute couture and after fashion. about your own modeling career because you must be the only model who's got that amazing gray hair. Yeah. Is it um, natural? Yes, it's natural. I Unlike start at mine. 15 years oh, old. Really? Yeah. And my parents have white hair and all my brothers and sisters too. But I'm sure I'm the only one. I, so. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, you exclusively model for um, Christian Lacroix. What's so special, do you think, about his clothes? Yeah, uh, first you wear the cross when you work for him, <laughs> his Lacroix cross. And uh, it's uh, a mix of fabric and a lot of color. And uh, first you make uh, really tight here, and after the poof, he don't he stop to do poof, but uh, first you are doing poof behind. And uh, it's mixed and a little folkloric and uh, from uh, Provençal look, a, little, mm. a new Provençal look, a new woman. interested in politics because of now we're, we're living in an, uh, an electoral period and uh, we are obliged we're forced to, to be interested in politics and it it's also a character in the French mind we are very expansive we're interested in politics because we are used to have um, great political debates <laughs> Personally, I voted for Mitron because I, first I think is he would have been the the best president, and he is elected, so I think he will be the the best president France can have. Vive la République, vive la France. I think that he is um, he's quite clever, very very clever indeed is used to politician life and he, I think he can manage and do good, very good things for France. We'll see. I 
can't imagine that, that 40 person voted for people who represent who, um, who represents idea I hate above all because he wants to devise indeed France he wants to to throw the immigrants uh, out he wants to he is very simple he's, uh, he's a real demagogue you know? is special because they always uh, do politics with, with his private life. I mean, it's uh, like a sacerdoce. I don't know how you say it in English. Uh, it's his life. I mean, he, he gave uh, his life for, for politics. We have a problem in France of uh, chômage, with uh, unemployment in France, which is very, very important. And we think we are not against uh, the, the foreigners. It's not the problem, but we give the preference and we think it's, it's better to give the, uh, normal to give preference in France to the French and European people than to uh, the, the Arabs. Or I think it, it's normal that the Arabs are the first in their country and the French are the first in their country. It doesn't mean we are against the others, but it, it, it means that if you have an, uh, a job to give to somebody, it would be normal to propose it to a French first than to a, to, a, to a foreigner, you see. We are for the family, we are for the... Uh, we are against immigration, but not against the people. We, are, we think it's a, an economic problem, and that it's a, it's a problem in France, and that a, a lot of people doesn't have... Uh, jobs, and that it's an economical problem. But it's not a racist problem, it's no, no, nothing of that. This is totally different. <laughs> So you would like all the immigrants who have settled here to be in second place? No, I think that, uh, yes, I think the French, the French first, and European first, and the other after. Well, I think what well, she's just trying to do what her father, you know, she, her father is a politician, and uh, well, that really helps her to, you know, to be part of her father, and then she wants to keep straight to her father. She loves her father. I would say to marry Caroline Le Pen to forget about politics. But politics to her, I don't think is the normal thing to do, you know. And then leave, gather the foreigners together and to build up the country, to work to together, to live together and then to do everything together. <laughs> Touche pas mon pote Do you think it's possible to look good here without a lot of money? Yeah, yes. It's, it's easy, you can have a simple black dress and you can wear in the morning and you can wear the same dress at night if you add jacket, a little jacket or accessory and you can wear the same simple dress. Sometimes it's better to be simple with the right shoes and the right uh, accessory. <laughs> I like uh, to shop in Place de Victoire because I can try uh, the most big designer in the, in the shop and uh, the windows are very wonderful and I like look without uh, pay. Kenzo, I love very much and it's very, very practical to to have uh, the, the most big design in the same place.
match. Uh, victoire because uh, I try uh, a most uh, sexy dress and I like sexy dress. I like Galerie Lafayette because it's very practical when, when I'm busy because in the same place I can in the same place I can buy what I want and uh, there's a big the most big designer in the Galerie Lafayette. Practical too, because when uh, you have uh, a lot of things to buy, you can stop at a moment and go to eat uh, at restaurant, Galerie Lafayette restaurant. I like very much because it's really wonderful. It, it was buy on uh, the First Republic in the last uh, century and uh, it was uh, la belle époque and uh, it's, it's great. It's efficient, it's clean-ish. I'm told it's safe, and it's probably the best way of getting about Paris. How to use the metro, lesson one, follow me. Steel, where the French were revolting about 200 years ago, and we want to get to the Louvre. So we just follow this down the Louvre, that's where we want to go to to see the Mona Lisa. So I press that button and it lights up on the map. One, two, three, four stops, and it's all on the same line. The lines here don't have any names, so what you have to do is you follow the line all the way to the end, like so. And the final destination on this line is Pont de Nuit, and uh, that's what we'll have to look for once we've bought our ticket. The most economic way of buying a ticket is to get a carnet. Un carnet, s'il vous plaît. And there we are, that's what a carnet looks like. Ten tickets. Un soir de pluie et de mouillard Quelques taxis passent en mon corps Une insomnie qui tourne au cauchemar Je 
un soir de pluie by third degree burns, be very careful of French showers. There's no thermostat control on them, so make sure you turn the cold water on first, otherwise you're liable to get scalded. This is what is known in the television business as a piece to camera. It's a pity this isn't scratch and sniff telly, because that's the only way you get to fully appreciate the aromatic splendor of this device. You can find it in many of the cafes and bars of this city. Parisians call it the toilette à la Turque. Roughly translated, that means hole in the ground. It doesn't come with instructions, so now a rough guide's public service. If you're a man, position yourself so, with your back to the door and peace standing up. Now, if something more serious is being considered, you should turn around, like so, squat, and <laughs> face the door, which is in fact what you should do if you're a woman under any circumstances. But that's not all, there's more. Here is the chain, and before you flush, stand well clear, like so. Unless you fancy a free wash of your shoes and your socks and your trouser pockets. There are 64 fountains in Paris, but so far I've managed to resist the temptation to just rip off all my clothes and leap in because actually it's very hot here. But today was going to be the day, believe me. Until we got here and we saw this. Unfortunately, it's detergent day today. They put all this rubbish in here to clean the stone. So sorry, but I'm going to give it a miss. <laughs> Getting a toilet as small as possible has been the dream of French space scientists ever since time began, but that doesn't mean a lack of lavatorial convenience. For example, Parisians are great animal lovers. So infatuated are they, in fact, with their poodles and their Persian blues that they've invented a bath specially for their pets. So. And a miracle of uh, practical engineering it is, too. You can also use it for keeping your drinks cool, kids. And if you're really adventurous, you can stick your nether regions in it and give yourself a thrill. If you've got 80 francs just hanging around in your pocket waiting to be spent, this Turkish bath is a great place to come and laze around for a few hours. You can have a sleep, you can have a sauna, you can be pummeled to death by a masseur, and if you're feeling particularly energetic, you can even have a swim. I must warn you that the water in there is absolutely icy. And if you're wondering why I'm standing in here fully clothed, oh, it's a little known fact that people who work for the BBC are never allowed to get undressed. <laughs> Everyone knows that Paris is the gastronomic capital of the world, but the modern Parisian is bored with a diet of foie gras, camembert, and rich old cream patisserie. Instead, you're more likely to find him here at Marks and Spencer's. And what they're all after is this. Sliced white bread, orange marmalade. But the real runaway success in this style-conscious city is this. Nice, sensible, Marks and Spencer's knickers, sold by the thousand to French women who had to put up with frilly lingerie before the Brits arrived. It's enough to make you feel wildly patriotic, n'est-ce pas? Most of the girls at the Lido are very tall, so we tend to go to Marks and Spencer's to find the longer lines. Tights, for example, are very difficult to find when you're five foot ten, six foot. So most of us prefer to go there rather than buy things that are too small and have to take them back. Marks and Spencer's is a very good mark for us. Oh, you get the chance to wear such beautiful costumes and nice makeup and be very glamorous. Also, you're in the fashion capital of the world, so there's a multitude of things to choose from, from different designers. It's uh, good fun. Um, when I first came to Paris, um, it was a long time ago now, and it was really difficult to buy food and to get around Paris, and I just used to point at things. And then, so like, we're working at Lido, the dresses don't speak any French, any English. So you have to speak it up and after a while you just, you're not realising it, you start to speak the language which helps a lot. I just love getting up in the morning sometimes and just 
going out, shopping, having a look around the shops and then stopping maybe on a terrace and having a, having a beer. <laughs> um, what else? The food. The food, I love the food. And the men too. <laughs> to Paris this morning from an overnight train so we got in really early and had no problem getting a place to stay. It was really easy we just got to a room nice and early and at by 8 in the morning they still had place and we had no trouble getting anywhere. The room cost us what 215 francs wasn't it that included breakfast but if you don't want breakfast you don't have to yeah. pay so much money and we could have got a cheaper place if we'd arrived in the morning. It's best to be at these places as early as possible to get the best deal possible. The room we have uh, costs us like 63 francs a person. It's four four person room. Uh, we have a bathroom in the room. There's a communal shower down the hall. It's not that bad. It's pretty centrally located too, in the fifth of the Small, near the uh, Latin Quarter. So it's a pretty good place. We were lucky we got a shower, so that was quite good. But I hear that all places do. But I've been quite impressed, really. I've I've seen some other hostels in other countries and they've been very crammed and pretty scummy but these have been really quite good, I quite like them. So why do you like this place? I like a restaurant Chartier because uh, it's uh, very funny and uh, when I'm busy it's very rapid and uh, I like very much because it's cheap and the meal is really good. And you have to share the tables and things, don't you? Yes. It's very simple. Oh, it's got a good atmosphere. Qu'est-ce que vous recommandez pour un pique-nique? Uh, Voulez-vous du pâté? Um, pâté, oui. oui. Well, I mean, like if you came here then, yes. what, I mean, what do you order here? What's the best thing to eat? I think the menu, menu it's uh, like very a set, good. Yes. Set menu. And it changes all day, so it's different. You got one day it's meal or, or fish. It's uh, okay. very nice. No, it looks good. And that's, that's very yeah. cheap for Paris, isn't very it? Very cheap, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, so right, let's get someone in and we can order. Well, look at that. Alors, uh, des poireaux vinaigrettes. Yeah, moi je prends le noir des Et moi aussi. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Yeah. 
Mardi français à du vin, non La mission, s'il vous plaît. to say I like to see a film in English.
Sun is shining, then show your shoulders with this jacket with the scarf. It's a shop, it's wonderful, it's a, it's a big shop. Uh, what about the swimming suit like this? For parties, it's really nice. I love the uh, Jean Pugatier and the défilé, the mode. Not really a bra, it's a jacket. You can wear it very easily for parties. don't know the African people's language and uh, for me it's a way of uh, uh, using my music as a vehicle to, to make people discover uh, this dialect of this part of Africa and uh, make people also become aware of uh, the, spiritu the spirituality of uh, the people of my generation and it also uh, gives a hint of the political situation in Africa. I've heard your music, but to my ears, it doesn't sound African at all. It sounds much more like reggae or Caribbean music. Do, do, you, uh, do you think of it as African? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, because uh, what they call Caribbean music is a part of African music, like jazz, like blues, and... Uh, uh, I, as uh, what we call a modern African, 
which means um, an African which, which have a mixture of culture, Western and African culture. Uh, playing reggae music is, is, is a reflection of the education I have. Sweet, sweet, Fanta Diallo, oh, oh, Fanta Diallo. Sweet, sweet, Fanta Diallo, oh, oh, Fanta Diallo. Only one if Fanta Vire, with the sun. I wonder one if Fanta Mentire, under the sun. I wonder one if Fanta Vire, with the sun. You don't think you could also be accused of uh, not being uh, true to your roots and your musical traditions in Africa? Since the very first day I started speaking French, wearing blue jeans, you know, uh, me and my roots, you know, we kind of, we didn't split, you know, but we kind of uh, uh, soften our, our way of seeing life, you know, we don't have to be prisoner of our, our ancient culture. I'm wondering where she's gone. I keep on wondering where she's gone, gone, gone. I keep on wondering every day. I keep on wondering where she's gone, gone, gone. Sweet, sweet. Who exactly listens to black music? Everybody. What, black and white? Black and white listen to to black music and uh, if you see the crowd coming around reggae music you find out that you know uh, reggae music is really western black and white combined music you know you can see black man and a white man coming to see a reggae artist you know it's not really a um, color business, you know, it's kind of feeling. It's a, it's a, it's a, question, of, it's a question of feeling. After another, all to cover up something you say meant nothing to you. I can't believe it. Well, what can I say? I wouldn't have to lie to you if you trusted me, but you don't. How can I? How can I trust you ever again? I'm going to pack my things. You're going home? Yes. And I won't be coming back. So Frank uh, Dubosc did leave Weatherfield and Jenny Bradley and came back to Paris. Um, was it fun being on Coronation Street? Yes, it was wonderful for me. For a French, it's, it's wonderful. Because I, I didn't know about, um, about Coronation Street at, at all. And uh, when I arrived, I discovered all these people who are very well known there. And they were so cute and so nice. And, and I discovered my girlfriend, which is very nice. And uh, I think this yes, was very fun. Was it strange that um, you know you arrived having never heard of Coronation Street to be instantly made into a kind of household name? You know, people recognizing you in the street. And yes, it's strange because to be recognized in the street in France, um, you have to do so many films, and there you just have to be in a soap. Right, stand by your beds. The group is back. Are you still here, you two? Yes, I'm leaving. Will you prepare my bill, please? Leaving? What do you mean, leaving? You booked that room for a full week. Yes, but I've changed my plan. All of them. It's a bit much. Leave it, Alec. Huh? Don't make a fuss. Just take the water yours and try and be nice about it. How is the French film industry going here at the moment? Very badly. Is it? Yes, very badly. There, well, we've got so many American films and English films that it, it becomes very hard for us to, to find something very interesting. Mm -hmm. And as uh, we've got no money for films here, and uh, the public want American films because they are so, so great. Not so, not so good, not all the time very good, but so great the camera is moving everywhere and it's very interesting for us. 
and when you are going to see a French film, the camera is here, and you've got just to hear what they say, and it becomes very, um, how do you say, fastidious? Is it, mm, uh, is it uh, an English word? No? It, fastidious, <laughs> yes. I don't think it's quite the right word for this. Uh, uh, but it's, it, it's becoming um, boring. Yes, yes, yes boring. boring. <laughs> It becomes very snob to say, I, I like to see a film in English, because in the real version, I mean, except when it's in Russian or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But um, well, now, I, that's true that I prefer to see that in English, just to see how the, the, the actors are, are working, because in French it's not at all the same, and it's not very good. There's also a thing here, isn't there, about the usherettes? Ah, uh, yeah, I wanted to, to, you to wanted tell to you that, that you, you have to, to be very careful when you're going in a cinema in France, because I know that it's not like this in England. When you're going in, in a cinema, the um, ushret is following you, and they give you the, the place, the, the seat, and you have to give money, because they are not paid. And then you, you have to take care not to be the last one, and not to have to give the money when you are with, with friends, or, and it's always the, the fighting to be the, the first one, and not to have to give money uh, at these this people, but, well, it's their job, and they are asking for the money at the end. You How want much? this seat? Okay. How much? How much should well, you give them? I never give a lot of money. <laughs> well, you give one francs or two francs, it's not a lot, but it's the, the, we don't want to do that because we want to, to choose our seat ourselves. Here we go. Eggs are Owen. Owen, you've got to get it through your thick head. I may be a lot of things, but I am not a killer. You don't have to blow her brains out or anything. Thank you. That takes the pressure right off. She, she's old. She's got a bad ticker. All you gotta do is jerk around a lot when you talk to her. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Lift. Stop it. Well, just meet her. Maybe she'd be somebody you'd like to kill. Come in. What the hell's going on out there? Nothing, Mama. You woke her up. Who are you talking to? Who's in there with you? Nobody, Mama. Who's this? This is Cousin Patty. He's going to be staying with us for a while. Isn't that nice? You don't have a cousin, Patty. You lied to me. Shoot a taxi.
quelques éclaircies font oublier la pluie. Après ce long désert, traversé en hiver. in Bonnie Paris, so when I arrived, I, I really liked it in the way the, the way it was done. And people pe people don't don't bother you, you being gay, you know, they're not going to hassle you in the street or kind of argue just the way you were, the things you, you were and stuff like that. Uh, people, gay people are seen as individual much more than as in community, and that's why also politically they're so weak. <laughs> Il est fait si pour moi dehors Ici c'est confortable Laissez-vous faire Milor Et prenez bien vos aises Vos peines sur mon cœur Et vos pieds sur une chaise Je vous connais Milor Vous ne m'avez jamais vu Je ne suis qu'une fille du corps Qu'une ombre de la rue Pourtant je vous ai frôlé Quand vous passiez hier, vous n'étiez pas peu fière d'âme. Le ciel vous comblait, votre foulard de soie flottant sur vos épaules. Vous aviez le beau rôle, on aurait dit leur voix. Vous marchiez sans vainqueur au bras d'une demoiselle. Mon Dieu, quel 
The problem with the clubs in Paris is that they're so expensive. I mean, it, people are used to it. They don't say anything against it now. But when you have to pay six pounds worth of money to get in a club and each drink, and it's not even a pint of lager, you know, each drink is cost you 40 francs, so it makes four pounds. I think, you know, it's bound to, the club scene is bound to be bad, you know, mm. and there's just two, three, four clubs maybe people go to, gay people. <laughs> Comme toi l'existence, ça vous donne toutes les chances pour les reprendre après. Paris is as good a place as any to hide away from the harmful rays of the sun. But be warned, clubbers, you better not be a poor creature of the night. Getting into this club, Le Palace, will set you back around 12 quid, and that's just for starters. With drinks running at 8 quid a shot, either bring a friendly bank manager with you, or be prepared to help Patrice Colliveau, the manager of this gaff, with the washing up. How am I doing, Patrice? Not too bad, but you should do it a little bit faster. Ah. There's a lot of work here. Right? right, well, that's shining nicely. <laughs> Patrice, how can you justify a 12 pound entrance charge to the palace? Well, 12 pounds is um, as expensive as any other place in Paris. And here you have good fun, nice people, good music, and you've got your money worth. Do you get a lot of uh, English people coming here? Not too many, because they think that it's really too expensive and they are misers. Well, I can understand that. <laughs> well, we have all the kids, all the nice people, and some famous people, like uh, show people or fashion people. Jean-Paul Gaultier is one of them. He's a customer and yeah. comes here very often. Yes, I'm sure he can afford the entrance fee. Oh, um, he gets in for free. Oh, he gets in for free. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that's very fair, actually, Patrick. Well, the poor pay for the rich. Thank you. 